In today's video, I am going to explain anatomy and function of latissimus dorsi. I'm going to explain its origin, insertion, function, and important myofascial connection. Let me explain its origin first. Origin of latissimus dorsi is very, very broad. It's basically this area. It's freaking broad muscle. Let me start from axial skeleton part. It originates from thoracic spines, thoracic spines 7 through 12, T7 through T12, it's about here. Then some fibers attached to rib cage, that's rib 9 through rib 12, so rib 12, 11, 10, 9, so it's about here. Imagine that this must also runs like this and Part of fibers attached to rib 9 through rib 12. Oh my gosh, it's already wide origin, right? Then, additionally, part of fiber attaches to scapula. This part, just tiny bit, just slightly. This part is inferior angle. Inferior angle of scapula, right here. Actually, this attachment is very important. It's very important for scapula movement. Thus, if latissimus dorsi gets tight, maybe movement of scapula is decreased. Well, let's keep going origin. It attaches to all lumbar spines and sacrum. However, here's the thing. I don't say muscle fiber of latissimus dorsi attaches to lumbar spines and sacrum. Look at this part. Latissimus dorsi attaches to lumbar spines and sacrum via this fascia. What is this fascia? This is thoracolumbar fascia. Thoracolumbar fascia. Again, latissimus dorsi attaches to lumbar spines and sacrum via thoracolumbar fascia. This fascia is very important. Thus, I will explain this fascia later. This is important key structure for myofascial connection, okay? One more thing, it's about here. This is posterior part of ilium. Yep, this muscle attaches to ilium, lumbar spines, and sacrum. This is the only muscle that originates from spine, sacrum, pelvis, then it crosses shoulder joint. This is the only muscle in human body. Well, this is origin. It's very wide, right? Thoracic spines, lumbar spine, and sacrum, rib cage, inferior angle of scapula, then idiom. Very, very wide origin. Now, let me explain its insertion. Insertion is very narrow. Insertion is here. Oh, by the way, this is anterior view. This is latissimus dorsi. This is insertion. This part is intertubercular group. Intertubercular group or sulcus. You know, name of this place kind of varies depends on anatomy books. Some anatomy books might say intertubercular group, intertubercular sulcus, or ex uh, it's like a lesser tubercle. Okay, but it's here, it's on humerus. Important thing is it attaches to humerus and this is on anterior part. Insertion is on anterior part. This thing is a key thing to understand function of latissimus dorsi. Now let's go to function. All right, functions of latissimus dorsi. This muscle has multiple functions for shoulder. Main function is shoulder adduction shoulder adduction. Then one more big movement is shoulder extension. This is very important movement for pull up, chin up, like a pulling movement, right? Then one more main movement is internal rotation. Wait a minute. Latissimus dorsi is on backside of body. How come this guy can do internal rotation? Here is the key thing. I said insertion of latissimus dorsi is on anterior part of humerus. Yes, this is on anterior part. 
This muscle originates from posterior part of body. Imagine it's here, posterior part of body. Then it goes to anterior part. It's kind of twisting orientation. This is anterior part. When lattice muscles are pulled humerus this way and goes to posterior, this twisting vector brings humerus to which direction? It's internal rotation, right? If if latissimus dorsi attached to posterior part of humerus, it might do external rotation, but this is reality. Insertion is on anterior part, thus this kind of spiral orientation brings humerus to internal rotation. This is one of strong internal rotators in human body. Main functions for shoulder, that is adduction, extension and internal rotation. Okay, from now on, it's gonna be my hypothesis. Since latissimus dorsi attaches to scapula, I believe it has something to do with scapula movement. Let's say, latissimus dorsi contracts this way, what kind of force is applied to scapula and which direction? I believe latissimus dorsi pulls scapula this way as well. What kind of movement would it be? I believe it would be Downward rotation. Downward rotation. I don't know, you don't see this on anatomy book. This is completely my hypothesis. However, scapular movement is essential for shoulder movement. When scapula doesn't move, shoulder doesn't move. When your shoulder doesn't move, scapula does not move. Then, the testimus dorsi attaches to scapula, thus, this guy may have something to do with scapula. So downward rotation, but question mark. This is my hypothesis. Yet, this is very important muscle. All right, this is pretty much the basic information of latissimus mastosa. Now, let me talk about its myofascial connection. All right, this is lower part of latissimus mastosa. Do you remember this myofascia? What is this? This is thoracolumbar fascia, right? Thoracolumbar fascia part of origin is right here, right? Then there's important myofascial connection. I want to explain two things. First thing is this muscle. This is gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. By the way, this is left side. This is right side, right? Left side gluteus maximus has myofascial connection with right side latissimus dorsi see a uh, vector of left latissimus dorsi is like this way then right side latissimus dorsi runs like this way oh my gosh direction kind of matches right left side gluteus maximus goes this way right side latissimus goes this way that is why left side glutes and right side latissimus dorsi is connected on the other hand Right side gluteus maximus runs like this. Left side latissimus dorsi runs like this. The opposite part of gluteus maximus and latissimus dorsi has myofascial connection. These two muscles are both strong extensors. Gluteus maximus is strong hip extensor. Latissimus dorsi is strong shoulder extensor. You know. Hip shoulder extensions is important to pull our extremity. It is important for athletic movement. Thus, this kind of contralateral direction, opposite side direction is important for athletic movement. This is number one, latissimus dorsi and gluteus maximus. I want to explain latissimus dorsi and core muscle connection. All right, this is thoracolumbar fascia. Again, it can go to gluteus maximus. Where else can you go? You can go this direction. Abdominal muscles actually attach to thoracolumbar fascia. I want to pick one important muscle. It's deep abdominal muscle. That is transverse abdominis. Transverse abdominis is very deep abdominal muscle. This muscle is important for core stabilization. So you can say if your latissimus dorsi is tight, if you can't use latissimus dorsi properly, this dysfunction can affect for 
transpose of terminals, if you can use lattice mass torsi very well, that can directly affect for stabilization of transverse abdominals. This is important connection. I feel that whenever I run, whenever I do sprinting, weight training, if I can activate lattice mass dorsi very well, my core is stabilized. Maybe this thing is because lattice mass dorsi, then thoracolumbar fascia, then it can go to transverse abdominals. If you are a personal trainer, yoga practitioner, Pilates practitioner, you may focus for activation of lattice mass dorsi. I believe thoracolumbar fascia is important um, bridge for lower extremity, core, and upper extremity. Very important place. In today's video, I explain basic anatomy of lattice mass dorsi. I explain its origin, insertion, function, and important myofascial connection. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. See you next video.